Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you for joining me today for another Lessons from an Old Quilt. And this is a special edition because I have a guest. Well, actually, I'm your guest, but <laughs> he's here with me to help me. I'm sure you recognize him, but this is Tiankum from So Yeah Quilting, and he has been hosting me. I, all I'm, I'm so happy to be here to, to learn a lesson from Old Quilt here. So. So I'm going to put him to work also on picking out the different things about this quilt that we can talk about. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the history of this quilt. Two of my friends found this at a quilt shop, texted me and said, do you want it? And I said, yes, I do. $20 for this beauty. They brought it home. I paid them for it and I have good friends. This quilt measures 78 by 86. So it's a twin size. It's a nice size quilt. It does have some damage, however, and we are going to talk about it. Before we get into taking a closer look at this, what do you think? The, the things that you can see in this quilt? I like it. Well, first of all, 20 bucks, that's that's a still, right? Yeah. I, I think it's a beautiful quilt and it's really old techniques that we still see today, right? It's the exact exactly. same thing. They gotta be two inch squares. In today's world, we would be using two and a half inch squares, but it is beautiful. We're going to take it off the wall and take a closer look at it and then talk about the lessons that we can learn. Well, let's take a closer look at this quilt Absolutely. and see what we can see. So in this, we see that it's a nine patch block simple. Doesn't look like a nine patch that we traditionally see because usually we have an X with the colors, but here the maker put all of these as scrappy, giving this illusion of our square. What also is really neat is this background. This pink is also represented in the middle Love here. It. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So it kind of looks like these are floating. Well, and that was an intentional design aspect, mm -hmm. right? That they've created the floating square here. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, matching them up. Yeah. Matching Love them that. Up. And you know, they would have had to have had a lot of yardage of this. Now it could have been something they had left over, it could have been a sheet, it could have been yardage they purchased. Yeah. It, who knows? If these are all cottons, I do see one here that is not. So we see this fabric that's what's that called? Brocade? Maybe. I, yeah, I think it's called brocade. I, I work in cottons. <laughs> <laughs> cottons and minkies, that, that's about all I go to, so so there is that one square that is like a brocade. I think that's what it's called. It's a thicker fabric. It's like a... Like for like couches? Couches or something okay. like, maybe. Like a pillow yeah. maybe? Like maybe throw a pillow. pillow? Something else. But it was definitely a thicker fabric. I'm not seeing it anywhere else. I do see it here. But check out this block. Look at this. There's just a treasure trove of all kinds of cool stuff in this fabric. This is like a little Valentine's Day. Right? Look at it. It's so cute. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. Love well, and that was probably like a purchase type item right like maybe I, I doubt you, you're gonna find that on like a feed sack or anything you might you I mean, might, you might yeah there are definitely some feed sacks in here but you might have maybe some of the when I say newer I mean like 60s right could be a little bit in there which is bit. so cool super super cool super cool yeah we are seeing other feed sacks though that was a good point well, and uh, seeing some. some of these feed sacks here I I always go back to the feed sacks and the 30s prints in particularly too you'll go into your local quilt store and find this mm -hmm. a lot of yes. times because they're reproductions and it's amazing how people go crazy over it and back then it was like this would have been to the pink right you exactly. know like that, that would have like been the just the yeah. rage like, so many, that's yeah. so cool it's so cool there is and we also see this yellow but what i find really interesting too is we're seeing a lot of white in this so what we would normally see is the white background yes right instead we're seeing more whites in the square around love which it. i love 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 that this quilt is machine pieced and it is just, it's really cool. But we do see some imperfections. You don't notice them though. You don't notice them guys when they're all laid out. Absolutely. But you do see some, we see some puckering and we absolutely see some damage. So like machine piece then here, this could have been done on based off time period ish, <laughs> Like featherweight, 301A even, you know, yeah. it was most likely done on a singer at that time just cause Possibly. that's- Possibly, yeah. Um, Kenmore would have been quite, there yet maybe but not quite and yeah and, and it's always important to consider that somebody found these fabrics mm -hmm. and made it later too so yeah. but i will say when we take a closer look at the back we're going to see some clues also to that. awesome okay another thing we're seeing a lot of and actually you know we talked about that envelope yeah envelope and there's a little there's, bit there's there. a little there there's a little here there's a little everywhere but we also have this interesting green so we see this green uh, in a lot of places it does kind of stand out because it is darker this is the only block that I could find on here, at least, yep. that is more controlled, not as scrappy, because right. we have this in the four corners, which is interesting, because it makes you wonder, did the maker decide that they were going to go scrappy after? Did they make this as your sample block? What happened there? Exactly. Well, yeah. and 
the technique here, like if you were doing like strip PC or something yes. like that, that's how you end up getting those blocks in today's world. Yes. But they couldn't have gotten those blocks in the way that they made the square. So these are individually. Put it, well, we don't know. You know? I mean, I guess they could have been strip piece, but who knows? I don't know. Well, you know what we might be able to look at? I'm about. saying they, they, were, they were, could have been a strip piece together because they're different centers. Oh, different oh, centers. So, you see what I'm point. saying? See, so that, see, that's, yeah, this is why you're, you're here. You're seeing a lot of different, well, <laughs> it, there's a lot of technicality in something like this, yeah. and it's, in modern day, it's all about speed. Yep, absolutely. Back then, it was about creating something that was beautiful and was functional. Absolutely. It's so important to you because it's also what you had because mm -hmm. you didn't have a lot, yeah. so you, you had to use what you had. I also just noticed this. This one, look at that. That's not even scrappy oops. at all. Oops. Is it an oops? Right. Might yeah. have been an oops. They might have been like, oh. And you know what? Sometimes that would have really derailed a quilter and yeah. upset them. Yeah. But we see it all the time. Well, so. let's just be real here. You've all done this. We've all done this. That's 2 a.m. right that's there. That's 2 a.m. <laughs> no, that's 2 a.m. We know exactly what that is. We know, yeah, we know. That, that was not supposed to happen, but that was 2 a.m. and we put it in there and then it was over, right? Exactly, exactly. And I always like to think, what was this quilt supposed to be? Mm -hmm. It didn't Absolutely. get finished. What happened? What, I, I need to know the story, but I right? never, never find out that story. Of course, of course. All right, let's talk about some of the damage, then we're going to turn it over and look at the back. There is some damage or um, distortion on this. Of course. I'm sure what happened. Could have been sun damage, could have been some sort of chemical that was put on it, but we are seeing or some 70 years. 70 years, <laughs> right. yeah. It could have been the way it was folded. Maybe yeah. that was on top. So we are seeing a few blocks like this. There are also a few seams that are coming apart. We can see that here. You got a hole right there. But that's easy to repair. And we had a few stains. Mm -hmm. So we need to decide how we're going to repair this, if we're going to repair it. Of course, <laughs> yes. of course. There are 98 of these blocks. 98 of those. Yeah. And then there are 97 of these. So this whole thing, this giant quilt, is made up of 195 blocks. Tons. If I did my math Tons. right. 195 blocks. So let's take a look at the back side of this and of get a few more clues. So we're seeing a, a lot of very tight stitches. Repairing that is, that's going to be an issue mm -hmm. because we're going to have to pick out these stitches that aren't like what we would have now. Yeah. They're super, super tight together. You can also see that they used a white thread, which is very interesting too. They didn't use a pink. We would probably have used a pink maybe. Lots but this of pink. Is, this is what they would have had, right? Also, very important, you're seeing that these seams aren't nesting like we normally do. It doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. We need right. to get over all of that stuff. It's a really cool quote. I'm, it's sad to me when I see these that aren't finished because I always wonder what would have been. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and one thing that we are seeing, okay, ironing on this, again, you got to remember what time period it was. Yep. We would get best press or a starch or something to flatten all this out and our clappers out and get this thing all pressed. Absolutely. Back then, that wasn't an option, right? So, option. but of course, they did have those heavy steel. Super, irons. super heavy steel <laughs> iron. Well, but come like on, clapper and iron in the. <laughs> I've, I've been doing that a couple of times. You're like, it's fine. It's, it's fine, fine yeah, right? It. So, so love it. Anyway, so it's a great quilt. Love the quilt. Okay. All right. So from here, we're gonna get this back up on the wall and talk about the lessons we can learn. All right. Wasn't that incredible? Absolutely. Like, so neat. There's so many things that you can see in these quilts, as you know, when we do this. And I'm gonna give you three lessons, as always on this old quilt. So what do you think? The first lesson, talk about that background. So background for me is that everyone in today's world, right? It's always white, black, or gray backgrounds. And from this old quilt that we're learning, it doesn't have to be that way. You can go with pink, you go with the orange, your favorite color even, or style it to the person that it was going to be gifted to. Yeah, could even be a print, which is what yeah. we're gonna see in a tutorial later on. Another thing that we also notice is that green fabric, right? Lots of it. Lots of it. So we're seeing that it's a controlled scrappy. There are lots of scraps in this quilt. I like that controlled scrappy. <laughs> and, and, yeah, yeah. And, that, and it also goes back to that time period, the 1940s, 1950s. They may not have, but they did have what we had. Yeah. So this is probably a lot of old clothing and scraps, and they just integrated it in and kept that pink background. Love it. And then another lesson we can see from this quilt, we see a lot of white in the scrappy blocks. Yeah you know, that helps that pink just pop and stand out. And these blocks do look like they are floating on that sea of pink. Love it. Love Lots it. of lessons. And let us know, what do you see in this quilt that you think that we didn't talk about? We could well, too, with, this with the floating block thing, right? You're seeing all these modern quilts coming out, right? And it's like the floating squares, tumbling squares, this kind of square. It was done. It was done forever this? ago, you know? So it's it's cool to see that the old lessons are still in practice today. 
Absolutely. Nothing's new, it seems like, with it. And then finally, a great lesson from this, and we see this all the time in these old quilts, is that it's not perfect. Those points are not on. Who cares? It's still an incredible, incredible yes. quilt. Yes. And when you're looking at the quilt as a whole, you're not seeing those imperfections anyway. Have some fun with quilting. Enjoy the process. Well, and, and, and learn from And art. also, with that, think about the mechanics they had then. Okay? Yeah. Like, we have some of the most precision tools and instruments, and we struggle with perfect. Exactly. And they didn't have near what we had. And yet, if you zoom up close, yes, there are some imperfections, right? Right. However, a lot of them are on point. You know, the majority of it, they've done their due diligence and made an amazing quilt. The lessons that you can learn from the older products are amazing. And gain inspiration from them, which we'll see in a later video. Love it. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for joining in. Thank you, Tiakum, for helping me with this lesson. Well, and well. thank you for teaching me more about these old products because we came into the game not very long ago, so it's, it's nice to go back. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew, and I'll see you real soon.